So let's have a look at my parametric uh, screw design in FreeCAD. It's uh, simple enough to modify for your own needs, but uh, then you may need some expl explanations how to use it. First of all, there's the drawing, which uh, shows some specifications, but this is more or less a test. It will just uh, throw some errors, so best to ignore it. Then we have uh, the screw itself and the dimensions. Um, one thing first, because the screw has a Phillips head here, you may um, need, or you probably will need, the fasteners workbench, which you should have anyways if you are using FreeCAD for uh, tinkering like this. Um, you can find this uh, in the add-ons and then just look for fast tenaris. That's it. Should be easy to install and then the cut should work fine here. So let me show you the different dimensions. The first one's a total length, which is the length from this to the very tip. So uh, make sure this one is smaller than the thickness of your material. Let me change this to 35 millimeter to show you. Okay, so this is what I was, uh, what I was talking about with the uh, drawing not being uh, designed very well. So let's just ignore this whole um, this whole window. <coughs> just doesn't matter for the screw itself. So the total length. That's that. Let's go back. Then we have the thread diameter, which is the diameter of the threads from here to this side. Let me show you what this does. So now this, this diameter and that one is the same. Go back. Then we have the thread depth, which is the cutting action the threads perform. This is this length. We should change this to, for example, two. And then we have a much thicker main body and um, just very thin threads. Let's go back. Then we have what I call the thread top width, which is uh, this part. You should just have this match your layer thickness. That's um, it may uh, screw up your slicer otherwise if this is ends in a very um, tight corner here. So just use your layer height here, your presumed layer height or multiples of that. Then we have the whole diameter for the, for the wood screw that goes inside this anchor. That's this part, quite easy. Changes to 2 mm, gets smaller. Nothing very special here. Then we have the thread pitch, which is the distance from one thread to the next one. If you want more threads, you decrease this, for example, to four, and you have more threads. What's best here depends on your uh, material. So let's put this back to six. Then we have a head thickness which is this part here, the thickness of this head plate. And um, that should also be a multiple of the layer height, which I've just done here. And this is basically to have some meat for the, for the Phillips head to grip into. If you have uh, maybe two or three solid layers at the bottom, gives the whole thing some structure. And if you change that, you have a much larger head, which may indeed be quite useful if you, for example, have uh, quite soft foam and you um, put a load uh, in this direction. It's probably helpful to have a larger head so that the screw cannot tilt as easy into the material. The, I call it screw, the foam screw, the anchor here. 
So let's put this back. So that's pretty. Much, oh, that's too much. Uh, so that's my uh, so-called foam screw or drywall anchor, anchor, foam anchor, whatever you want to call this. And one more thing for the export in FreeCAD, if you're not familiar, you just pick what you want to export. If you have the dimensions selected or something, you will get into trouble. So that picks a screw and do file, export, STL and export it accordingly. Then put it into your slicer as per usual. Um, place it like this. It will not need any supports. And uh, yeah, that's it pretty much quite easy, I think. I've printed uh, maybe 40 or something of these screws, different lengths and used in different applications. I'm quite happy with them. So have fun. You want to make sure that the screws work. Before you drill these in, uh, into styrofoam, because um, otherwise the screws will turn this and then break the styrofoam essentially. So it needs to be some sort of equilibrium between the force needed to turn this screw and the holding force you want to achieve with this, uh, with the metal uh, with a wood screw through the. Uh, the part you want to attach to the styrofoam. So let me demonstrate how these, um, I call them foam screws, are supposed to work. You have your printed screw in uh, uh, length and diameter and hole diameter that you can define in the parametric free cut design. Um, and I went with this approach because you may need different lengths in spe um, specific, uh, specifically. For example, you want to attach something to the flat side of your styrofoam. You can use a short screw like this. First, you best is to pinch the hole where it's supposed to go. Use your screw. I like to go a little bit below the surface, it doesn't come through. Now you can attach something with your screw. Or you can attach another flat panel with a washer and a longer screw, for example. And if you want to attach something to the, um, to the smaller, uh, smaller side, but with more depth you can for example use a screw like this which is basically the same just longer but it will it'll give you more hold on the styrofoam because it's longer and you have all the space you need you can ask for here you can also screw this in by hand if you are unsure or if you want to uh, just want to want more control just push it, push it gently There's a big Phillips head screwdriver that makes it easier. Push it until it's a little bit below the surface and now you can attach something. I will for example attach this piece now. For that I would usually use a nail to locate it beforehand. Generally you may want if you build a, some structure from styrofoam you want to um, Attach it with nails first to see how it comes out. Also you can then mark where you want to go. And once you have done that, you go take your washer and your screw. Then screw, locate the anchor and 
out with some force, not too much, attach it. And this is bad for just styrofoam, but you cannot rip it out this way, depending on the size of the washer, of course. Maybe you can also 3D print the washers for some design effect or something. But uh, I intend to use this to attach, uh, for example, hinges. So these are the styrofoam screws for the door of this uh, enclosure for my 3D printer. And these long ones are for the door itself to uh, connect to a hinge. And uh, let's screw one in. I used uh, this uh, poker to uh, make a, make an appropriate hole. Maybe you can even drill it with a small drill to make more room. And then carefully screw it in. See that you go on straight. You can also use the cordless drill, but uh, for this type of work I like to have uh, more control. not wood so don't overdo it good. so what I've done now is I have lined up uh, I've uh, put through all the screws so that I can now line them up with the dowels uh, they can turn in here reasonably freely and of course it's a little bit fiddly to line up all the dowels this is cool. see you can apply quite some tension on these screws and will nicely stick these styrofoam pieces together. <laughs> 